Time for us to jump into an interview. I'm really excited about this one as well because we are talking with Sophie Herzog, who is a member of the United States Paralympic team. And also we're talking with Wendy Gorey, who has become the coach for uh, Sophie or one of the coaches for Sophie. I'm assuming that the Olympic coaches still are having some sort of uh, way of talking with you. But first of all, Sophie, thanks so much for taking some time to talk with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, uh, for I don't get a chance to talk to Olympians very often, but uh, first of all, I, I guess what, uh, what started you off on the path to the Olympics. Let's let's just start at the very beginning. You're from Fair Play, Colorado. You got into it when you were in middle school, but what kind of got you motivated to to trying to to go down this course? Yeah, I was born and raised in Fair Play and I grew up a professional skier and I wanted to go to skiing for the games, but I was sadly going to need some knee replacements before I graduated high school. So I switched over to swimming and I showed some potential to go to the games in that. And I had some really good friends that were um, in route to go to the games as well. So Fair Play didn't have a swim team there. Um, so I went to Platte Canyon to swim for their high school team. And then my parents and I decided that if I really wanted to go for it, I was going to need to move down to the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. So I graduated high school a year early and moved down to there in 2014. You, you mentioned something that I find just absolutely amazing and mind blowing that you went from skiing to swimming and, and skiing is not an easy sport in itself. But how was the transition from that from the two sports? What was that like in that process? I think it was pretty easy. I grew up in a really athletic family, so I was doing sports of all sorts. Um, so it was just pretty simple. I learned how to swim when I was really young, so then I just started training it. Now, you're from a small town in Fair Play, and for people that don't know, very small up there in, 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 in the wilds of South Park County. But coming from a small town like that, was there were, were there detractors that... that said, you know, it's you're from a small town. We're not going to be able to get, you're not an Olympic athlete. You're from a small town. It's, it's just kind of not the way it goes. Kids from big cities go to this. Did you ever have that kind of statements or was the town really supportive of what you were able to do? Yeah, the town was super supportive, but it was definitely, I was going up against girls that were swimming year round programs, um, really getting ready for the games. And I was hopefully squeezing in about three practices a week. Um, so that's where it really decided that I needed to move down to the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center to get all my full on training. So when I was 17, I actually didn't swim that year and I fit two years into one so I could graduate early and move down to the training center. Talk about before that, though, because you said you actually were three away from qualifying for the London Olympics in 2012. That's five years previous to you going down to the Olympic Training Center. Talk a little bit about just the the, the experience that was like of trying to qualify. Yeah, um, I think it was really good, actually, that I didn't make the team because it really lit the fire. I saw those girls, what they did and what I needed to do. So I drove home from that meet really devastated since I was just didn't make the team. But it really lit the fire and showed me what I needed to do if I wanted to do it right. When you talk about getting noticed, was there some confidence once you got over the initial kind of, OK, I didn't make the team? Did the confidence grow for you a, 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 after that experience and say, man, I was that close to going? Yeah, I, I don't really like to dwell of in the past of that. It's always just been what's the next goal. Right after London was done, I actually started training when the girls were there or the whole team was there. And then my eyes were just on the games for 2016. So I built back my confidence just through training. Well, you said also that the 2014 competition, uh, the national competition, was your first true international competition. It was here in, in California, I think you said. What was that experience like when you actually got to that stage? What, what was going through your head? Yeah, it was it was my first team I was named on to, and I was fresh at the training center, so it was really good just to see what we were starting with, and a good baseline leading into the 2016 game. How was your performance in that one compared to what you were expecting? I know the first time you actually get onto that big stage, yeah. sometimes it doesn't match up. Your, your performance doesn't match up to what you want. How did how did it go on that one? Um, I think I was still really young. I w had to be about 17 or 18 at the time, and I just had all the adrenaline that had some really good swims. I was still a good rookie, so they were just hoping for me to get into finals. I got one medal in the relay, so that was a lot of fun. But it was more of a learning experience for me of just being in a huge setting with international prelims finals, 10-day uh, meet kind of thing. 
talk a little bit now about the next step for you, because that was going to the Olympics in 2016. You went to Rio with that team. What was the qualifying process for that one like again after 2014 when you got that that first taste of it? What was the process in the next two years like? We really built in to leading into 2016. Um, I went into 2016 trials and I swam a time that put me third in the world. So I automatically qualified for the team. So that was a huge confidence booster. Um, I went I went to sleep that night knowing I was gonna be named onto the team, which was really nice. And it was just right after that, I was full on to training for the games and it's just been training ever since. Well, you didn't just qualify for the Olympics in 2016. You took a silver medal in the breaststroke. Talk about being able to get hardware, not just going over there, yeah. but actually having success. And not just with yourself and with your teammates in the US, but a worldwide audience. That has to be something that's on your list of like top achievements. Yeah. So we were at practice one day and I got up and I just wanted to swim 100 breast off the blocks just to see what I could do. And I swam a time that put me through in the world and the coach at the time you know, said that you're going to the games to medal. You're not going to the games to just go to the games. Um, so that really lit the fire of the game had changed for me. And I swam a time that put me third in the world again at the prelims in Rio. And I was just so excited and I had a ton of adrenaline. And I shot out in a 44 seconds. And I came home a little bit slower because I was just so excited. And I am more famous for my interview, my post-race interview, than my actual medal because the lady caught me from NBC and I just completely lost it of all the emotions of six years of training for that dream. I was going to say, that's got to be the part where you'd like actually achieve it and not just qualify, but you know, you, you yeah, get that. I was um, a small town girl that won a medal at the Paralympic Games. That's just too cool to me to, to hear. And it's not just stop there, though. That's the part that I always find just incredible about this story is it keeps getting better every year that you go forward. Uh, you set world records in two different events, uh, a 1500 free, and then you have a record of 200 uh, as well. And what's the world record? How do those stand up compared to the medal when you talk about having a record versus actually actually being in competition against somebody else, which one kind of resonates more for you? I'd have to say the medal, just because it's just more, it's it's the games, and the games is just an indescribable place. The emotions, the adrenaline, and that's what we live and eat and train to do. So winning a medal um, has surpassed my record, so hopefully I'll be able to get a record at the games with a medal this time. Cool, and that's what you're hoping for. You're working on getting ready for the 2020 games over in Japan, just to, in this summer, I mean, how excited are you for getting the second crack at the Olympics? I'm really excited. I'm. This will be really. Tokyo is going to do an incredible job. So I'm really excited to go and represent my country. What's the qualifying process like after you've qualified for it once? Is is it basically the same process for the next yep. four years? So it's the we go to trials in April and June, and it's square one again. So all of us have to requalify ourselves. How confident are you, and how have you been swimming so far this year? I'm I'm pretty confident. I'm I feel really good. I recently moved here to Salida mm -hmm. to train under Wendy Gorey, who I really love, and um, we've been changing up some things. And I feel really confident going into trials. We got Wendy here too, so we'll talk with her in a moment. But but on that move to Salida. Is it kind of nice to get back to the small town after having been in, a, in in the big training center and kind of in the big city of Colorado Springs? Kind of nice to get back to your roots and kind of a little yeah. smaller, slower, slower pace? Yeah. Um, so actually at the Olympic Training Center, I met um, my boyfriend now, and he's a professional cyclist. And so we decided that we wanted to move off to the off the complex and move here to Salida. So it's our first house and it's just been really fun becoming an adult and growing into ourselves together, which you can't really do at the training center. Um, it's more like a college campus. So it's been really fun to have a house and be able to cook and do, do our own things together here. Um, and then while I can still full on train. You also train with some high school kids too. And, and we were talking about that and I talked about kind of getting away from the professional athletes and into kind of the more, you know, the high school kids and, 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 and the kids that are still working on those goals. You kind of lit up a little bit when I yeah. brought up that fact. It, how fun has it been to get back with some, some, some younger kids? It's a ton of fun. Swimming is really serious for me. It's my job. So I get really stressed out and it can get really intense sometimes. So it's really fun to come in and train with the high school girls where it's when I was in high school, where it's just a ton of fun and you're you're just making friends and swimming hard so it's been really fun they've kept me young and 
and live and loving the sport again. Sophie Herzog has been talking with us, so we'll bring in Wendy now, who has been helping coach her. And, and Wendy, what's it been like kind of getting that experience for yourself, too, of, of out of the blue, kind of sort of her coming up and, and, and wanting you to help her out? It's been kind of surreal. All of a sudden, I got a call from Sophie and... You know, she interviewed me about coaching her, and I I was able in my swimming to career to swim not at the levels that she's at, but at fairly high levels. And so I I think it's been a really great match with us because I understand the stresses of having to swim at high levels and what you have to put into it and the focus and how sometimes it just can be overwhelming. And so I think. We've been a really good match for each other because I, I kind of get where she's coming from. Like I said, I've never had the pressure <laughs> that she's had. Um, but when you start swimming at elite levels or, or training in any sport at an elite level, you're talking about a very different ball game than high school or collegiate sports. It's a very different ball game, And it, it can be pretty tough to, to keep your mental and physical um Focus to to continue to do that. So, it's it's been great. I'm I'm nervous because I want to do the best I can with her. So I'm a little nervous about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk a little bit about the first couple months because I know after the interview and after trying to figure out if it was right. So what was your first impression of so uh, of, of Wendy rather in the pool, Sophie? Yeah, um, I really just needed a change, and I really love just the way she treated me and trains me and we have a really good mutual respect for each other and I honestly love you know coming to the pool every day and I just love swimming under her when you when you talk about it too Wendy what was your first the first couple of months like with Sophie I mean in the pool what, what was your first kind of did it meet expectations or exceed what you expected you would be seen come in with you there were a couple things. Number one, like I said before, I was nervous because she's the real deal and she's training for very, very serious swimming, um, which is at a level way beyond what most athletes do around here. But secondly, it was a breath of fresh air to see someone so dedicated and so focused and anything you tell her as a coach she takes it, listens to it, and puts it into practice. And it was like, oh my gosh, finally an athlete that's... Not that the high school girls don't do that, but Sophie's older, she's had more experience, and she's just got that focus, that laser focus, which I love to see because I'm very type A and very focused as well. The other thing that has just been amazing is Sophie has been such a positive influence on the girls here and they have seen what it takes and how you can swim through anything and how you have to really mentally focus and I think she's brought those girls a very long way our team has done so well this year and I think a big piece of it is that they look at Sophie and they think she truly is the mantra no pain no gain and when you want to compete at a high level at a state level or a national level or international level You have to be able to push yourself way past a lot of pain and give up a lot of things. And Sophie has been the leader on the team for that. And it's been an amazing thing to watch with the with the the younger girls. Well, that's really one of the next things I wanted to ask you is you have a a team that currently is ranked number one in the state uh, for Colorado for 3A swimming. And we've talked about that. The rankings are kind of suspect in ways and it's weird, but you still got to take pride in that number one. How much do you think having somebody like Sophie? around with that work ethic has helped out with that extra drive not just going from you guys have been ranked before but being able to push you over to the top do you think that presence has helped out a bit I think it's been huge I mean the girls see her in the weight room they see what she's doing they see how hard she's working and she's got a weight training practice that comes directly from the training center um, and some very 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 high end people I mean the highest end in the world really because we lead the world in strength training for swimming so the girls see her in the weight room and they're like oh well Sophie's doing it so I need to work hard in the weight room or they see a very hard practice set in the pool and they see Sophie never complaining, never doing it and just putting her head down and going. And I think they're like, oh, this is what we have to do. So her presence has been a very big piece of 
of our girls swimming so well this year. Sophie, what's been your favorite moment from this year with that team? Is there anything that stood out to you? Any of the girls, your your interactions with any of the girls in particular, or just kind of something through the year with the team that just really shouts out to you? Like, man, this was such a, 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 a uh, an enlightening moment or just a, a, a fun moment with this group of kids? Just the whole season in general. I was definitely a little nervous coming in since I'm not a high schooler and they they already had friendships and I was kind of the outsider coming in and they've totally welcomed me and it, it's a really great group of girls and just being able to watch the team, you know, go best times, qualify for state. It's just been an honor to see that happen and be a part of it. Have you been able to go to any of the, the meets for the girls and actually be there on the side, or has your schedule not allowed for that? I went to one meet in Colorado Springs because I was there, and I was able to watch them for a little bit. But sadly, I have to stay here and train on Saturdays when they get to go have a race. It's a tough part when your job, I, I understand that completely. It's tough when your job is when everybody else is out enjoying all these things. What's uh, what's the biggest piece of advice that you think that you've been able to pass on? Is there any conversations that you've had with any of the the, the top girls on the team for Slida that that passed on advice, or, or even some of the younger girls on the team? Yeah, just that it's swimming is a really hard sport. It's just a solitary. Your body hurts. You're tired. But the hard work it's going to pay off at some point, and hopefully in the next two weeks when state and leagues happen, um, they'll see the payoff, which I have full confidence they will. I'm pretty excited about them, too, and we're going to have Wendy on the Coaches Show next week to talk a little bit more about what the uh, the Spartans are doing. But, uh, Sophie, I think one of the biggest things I want to talk to you about, you talk about the, the work that you put into it, but the reward. You've gotten to see the world. You've gotten to travel all over the place. You said uh, you've trained in London. You've been to Australia. You've obviously been to South America. You're hopefully going to be heading over to 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 Japan in, in, in this summer. What is the biggest thing about the world travel that you've taken away from it and what are some of the biggest things that you uh you, you take away from that travel i'm just super super honored and humbled and grateful that i'm you know 22 years old and i get to travel the world and train for a living and i've met some of my best friends and my boyfriend through sport so i i just am really grateful for what i've been able to do and where i've been able to go one of the last things too is as a paralympian obviously you're an inspiration to people because it's not just you're an athlete that's doing big things but you're an athlete's had to overcome some things. Two questions on this one. What, first of all, did that mean to you first and now I mean, when you first got into to competing at a national level? And does it mean anything more to you now that you've actually been around and kind of had that success and seen people come up to you? Yeah. So I stand fully grown at four feet tall. I was born with a form of dwarfism called achondroplasia. And starting out, I just had to work 10 times harder than anybody else just to be on a, the even level playing field. Um, and I grew up in a really competitive family, so sports was a huge thing. I was always doing something 10 times harder than anybody else. And now it's just really nice to be in a town and, you know, someone seeing me swimming and being like, if she can do it, I can do it. Because anything's possible if you put your mind to it. When you talk about that, anything's possible side of things, have you seen anybody come up to you or do you have any stories from your time around and at, at events where people come up to you and say, man, you it did inspire me to do this or you did inspire me to have this? Yeah, I guess a couple younger dwarfs now that are getting into the Paralympics, I've hopefully helped inspire them getting there because um, I knew them at a really young age and I helped them find a team close to them and so they've really found the love of swimming even if it's not swimming if it's a sport or art or drawing music whatever it is just as long as you find something you love and you give it your all last question because we've taken over 20 minutes of your yeah, time right okay. now but uh what's what's next for you because i always love asking that to the high school kids but what's what's kind of the next step forward for you yeah, um, so I actually head to Australia in February, and then um, Wendy and I are just training into trials, which is in April and June, and then um, the Paralympic Games in August. And Wendy did just mention something I completely forgot to bring up. Uh, you, we talked about the records that you set, but you just set a new world record in the World Games that, that, that just took place. Talk a little bit about that That yeah. excitement going there that just, um, came, that just took place. Yeah, so I set it in January at the training center in the mile, um, and I took two minutes off my old record. And Wendy was there, and she walked all 30 laps with me, which is really nice. <laughs> And that's got to be cool. When you break your own record, what was that kind of like when, when you're sitting there going, like, man, I cut two minutes off of my own personal best? Yeah. And um, that was the best. <laughs> yeah. I 
It was it was a really hard swim, and I went out a lot faster than I was anticipating I was going out. So once I got out and I saw my splits, I was really actually proud of how I was able to hold my time um, throughout the whole 1500. Well, it's definitely been a pleasure talking with you, yeah, Sophie. Thank you so much for Thank coming Thank you so up. much. And uh, best of luck to you this year. Hopefully, we, we will see you qualifying for the Olympic Games. I'm If you're setting world records right now, I'm pretty sure that there's... Well, you can never guarantee anything, but I'm 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 liking your chances, and and we'll wish you the best of luck over there. And uh, thank, thank you. you so much for representing the United States and representing the the state of Colorado. Thank you so much.